Sunday morning, I'm into work on the Volvo. It's there. It's frozen. It's all frozen, mate. Even the kettle's frozen. Uh, it's frozen shut. We got ice. Frozen kettle. These are not acceptable working conditions, I think you'll agree. Hey, Jeek. <laughs> oh, yeah. There she is. So, give it five minutes. Let this guy go up to temperature and then we'll be able to do some work. And what's going on over here? I think he's skiving. Hi. What are you up to? Just uh, having a look at all the new Jimmy Up stuff that's on Triflon's page. You're meant to be at work. I am at work. This is work. <laughs> you want to uh, tell me what you're up to this week? 30 Who's is this? This is a uh, Patron's. The new boss man's new whip. New whip. It's in for a gearbox oil change. Oh. And some. They're bad for like clonking and stuff. So. Yeah, that's the thing with these, you've got to keep yeah. them in. What else? Ren's out in for a service and that before it goes up for sale. And is he selling that? Yeah. Huh, I never knew that. Yeah, he's selling that. So he says he might change his mind <laughs> next week, you don't know. Are you doing anything that makes money this week or just fixing all the bosses? I never motors? make money. <laughs> I'm due for maintenance. I'm due for maintenance. Right. This week, I have been mostly eating roasted chickens. I'm going to be spending most of my time on this Volvo. This was in, uh, you would have seen this in the, the vlog uh, a week or two ago. This is Matthew's 760 Turbo. It runs the B20, B23 FT. Yeah. B23 FT engine. Um, I'm led to believe that's quite rare for this particular model Volvo uh, to have the B23 FT in it. It also runs the M90 gearbox, which is the gearbox from the newer uh, model Volvos. Uh, strong gearbox, which is why people use them on this. So we've got a recall gearbox here, because the one that was in the car was crunching in the second. It's also got a broken uh, mount with a selector rod in, so I'm going to stick this new gearbox in. Uh, we've also got the radiator and oil cooler and stuff either removed or disconnected at the moment. Um, I'm going to go and put a new radiator in, some service and stuff on the brakes, and just a couple of little bits and pieces just to take it from being a road car to a drift car. Just walking round the corner to go and visit these guys. Lee Smart Racing. This is Lee's unit here. Lee does. Um, Oh, these horrible stock car type things. Take a look at these. You know the types. Dents, scratches, angry drivers. So yeah, uh, Lee, uh, he's into stock cars. Um, he's not really realised that drifting's much better yet. Um, but this is his shop here. So he's on site at Driftland uh, and he specialises in alley welding. Uh, and we've got Lee doing a radiator for the Volvo that I'm working on. So I'm just going to pop inside and see if he's, uh, if he's made a start. What's going on? Hi there. What are you doing? Doing a radiator. Oh, my radiator. For one of the different customers. Uh -huh, for the Volvo. He's just making this radiator up for us at the moment. So I gave Lee the specific sizes uh, and a couple of changes to what I was wanting. Uh, and then he's going to go ahead and weld that up, uh, which I'll let you see on. One of the problems with Matthew's Volvo is the radiator. Uh, this is the radiator that was in the car. Um, as you can see, it's been poorly repaired in the past. Uh, there's a leaking coolant in both bottom corners. Uh, it's also not particularly large in, se in terms of core. Um, so, you know, for a drift car, cooling's obviously quite important. So we said to Matthew, you know, we should probably look at upgrading that. Because it's a Volvo, aftermarket parts are pretty scarce. So just gave him Lee the sizes and he's went and made this alloy, up, alloy radiator up um, pretty much exactly as I asked. Uh, so it fits just inside the chassis rails. Got mountain tabs on here so I can mount on the top of the chassis. Uh, but yeah I'm going to get this in the car and see what it all fits. Also got to make a cross member for the intercooler and the oil cooler which will mount just in behind these. Well I found uh, the gearbox gable uh, flat my bit. And uh, when I've took it off, oh, it's fell bits. Yeah, now I had to like chop the sleeves mm. out the the prop. So oh, that isn't a bad way, isn't it? Yeah. We often see these on the E36 and E46 models because they do take a pound in the 
the uh, drivetrain. Um, but this is also, I think, quite common on the auto BMs as well. 7 Series like this, the main thing with them is the gearbox. If you look after the gearbox, I mean, everyone else is usually alright for a lot of miles, but this, uh, yeah, that's, wow. That's a good fail. Yeah. Which was it? The the actual donut itself was like uh, 140 quid. Woo! Plus of that, and then uh, obviously it makes good sense to replace the bolts where you're at, and that's like another 50 pounds plus of that for the bolts. Is there anything else wrong with it? Yeah, well, yes. If you come over here, I'll show you because. Ooh. This had a gearbox leak, and uh, if you look up here, which is a Metatronic uh, connector here, mm -hmm. there's uh, there's a sleeve in there, and it leaks through there. So it's been leaking past the seal, and it, the whole sump was covered yeah, in oil. Yeah, there was a lot of oil in the back, wasn't there? Yeah, so yeah. you need to drop the sump anyway to change that seal. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense to do the sump as well as the gasket and the filter at the same time, and do cool. a fluid change. So I've got the radiator back from Lee, uh, I got him to add a couple of things, um, we've got the brackets on the side uh, and then I made a bung for the temperature sender for the fan controller. This car's going to get used on the road as well as on the track so uh, we're going to retain the, the fan controller switch that's there. Um, I'm actually going to use an E36 one, shock. Um, so I yeah, made a bung out of some material we had, uh, drilled it and tapped it, got Lee to weld it in here. So we're going to get this fitted, which goes in something like this. I've also made some brackets uh, for the top. These brackets hold the radiator and the intercooler together onto the front panel and stop vibrating, wobbling about. So stick them on and that'll hold the radiator in place. Um, and then the only thing I've got left to do for the radiator is to get a different hose because this one's no good because this is a wider radiator than the original one that was in the car. Um, other than that, uh, cooling wise, that's pretty much it. Just get the electric fan back on, get the fan switch wired in, uh, get some coolant in it and bleed it up. It's the ultimate chase, the hot 18 van trying to escape the MPs. Can the 18 do it? You can do it. Now you take control in new 18 action racing. Try to lose it. Spin the van through Daredevil. <laughs> Joe hasn't fixed the burnout problem. <laughs> Joe hasn't done it right. Joe. That was fine earlier. Yeah. It wasn't fine. It was. So How's it Chizzy? Than that. Yeah. You're blaming Kyle for this. Maybe no. blaming oh. shit smart cars for it. Well. <laughs>